From a humble beginning, Dr. Monene cannot forget how villagers and the University of Nairobi have been instrumental in his academic journey. Take a look at his story. Dr. Michael Munene, a lecturer at the University of Nairobi, specializes in the area of universal interior design, a space where the needs of persons with disabilities are met through building accessible homes or offices for the betterment of their livelihoods. Universal interior designs deals with the needs and uh, needs for persons with disabilities, issues to do with accessibility in the built environment. Depending on the type of disability, Dr. Munene explains how interior design works to customize each case to meet the expectations of every client. We have seven principles of universal design dealing with the needs of persons with disabilities. Basically, we are trying to make the living or working space to be more accessible and accommodative to people with disabilities. So, for example, a person who has a visual impairment with a low vision or high vision, the type of finish you have in a space can actually affect how that person is interacting with that space. So, someone who is totally blind, for example, using a white cane, will require materials that are responsive to that white cane. And uh, because they rely on what we call tactile design or tactile touch, you touch, you get response. Basically, design is about the five senses. We utilize the five senses. So visual, hearing, smell, touch, and all that. So you come to someone who is hearing impaired, again, they rely on vision or visual, what they can see. So universal design will come in and add other aspects of design, things like uh, directional navigation tools, science, lighting, illumination, to make sure that things or spaces are more visible to them because they can't actually hear what is happening. You come to someone who is physically disabled, so there you are talking about vertical horizontal movement, and uh, because they may be mobility challenged, they may be using wheelchairs or canes, uh, so you have to make sure you provide an alternative for them. So you are talking about providing a ramp because they can't go up the stairs. You are talking about providing a lift because they can't go again up the stairs, so they need to access maybe upper levels of what space, so they need that vertical movement. Universal design is also a great way to improve the quality of life for people with disabilities. Dr. Munene explains how this is a major factor to incorporate while doing interior design. We have about 15 and above different types of disabilities. So if you are talking about intellectual disability, so you can find uh, maybe design, universal design, is not able to handle those some form of disabilities. Because design basically deals with what you can see, the tangible environment. But now on this other level, something may need to be done that is not really design, but is actually design, what we call human-centered design. So it's not really tangible, you can't touch, you can't see, but there is a design element uh, that uh, is actually able to assist these people with these other forms of disability to make their work easier. But there are other aspects of design that can actually come in, like interactive learning. So the teachers, the guardians, the caregivers who are dealing with such kind of disabilities are actually able to use those other forms of design, like interactive learning, not the normal kind of classroom uh, learning where you go and sit down and listen to the teacher. So design comes in, they're able to make those interactive design materials, and then now they are able to tackle that form of disability. While a lot is being done to make living and working spaces disability friendly, there are some disabilities that still face challenges 
as technology has not yet absorbed them in the new inventions. Think of uh, children who have autism, for example. That's not something design, the way we understand design, can intervene. It's not only about the built environment. You are talking about even information, access to information. So someone who is able to access information technology through computers. So are you having a software that is able to assist these people? Someone who is blind, but are they able to actually interact with this technology? Due to a hearing impairment acquired while growing up, Dr. Munene recalls the challenges he encountered during lectures at the University of Nairobi as a government-sponsored student. He, however, was fortunate to have a brand new set of hearing aids courtesy of the university. When I joined university, because I had already lost my hearing by then, I didn't have a hearing aid, so it was very challenging for me because I could go to class, lecture, hall, I couldn't hear anything at all that was being taught. I used to sit at the front and some lecturers were actually asking me questions but I couldn't even answer. Then they were thinking of being arrogant or disrespectful to them until one of my classmates explained to one of my lecturers that I had a hearing problem. So the dean listened to me and then uh, I was referred to a referral hospital to a specialist who did an audiologist uh, test and what we call beta report so that they could give uh, feedback to the medical officer of the university. Thereafter, the university purchased for me my first hearing aids. Although the issue of class participation due to hearing aids had been resolved, he still had financial challenges with his school fees. A program that was meant for needy students began just in time to help educate him while he worked for the institution. Another component of how the university came in was a identification of needy students who were also disabled, then they were integrated within what we call work-study program, where you are learning, but at the same time you are working for the university, but they don't pay you actual salary. That money goes towards your tuition fees. Dr. Munene ended up landing a job offer due to his competence exuded while at the institution. I worked out there for three years, then the university, through the late director of School of Art and Design, Dr. Onyango, recalled me back, offering me a job opportunity as a graduate assistant. I actually didn't apply for the teaching job. The university just called me back. So I came. Uh, Dr. Onyango mentored me throughout. At that time, I only had my undergraduate degree. I worked as a graduate assistant for two years. Then I joined the postgraduate program for my Master's of Art in Design. Coincidentally, he developed an interest in universal design through an encounter with a visiting professor who happened to be a champion of the scene. And after exchanging some ideas here thereafter, researched intensively and picked it up with the management for implementation purposes. I met the Professor Mugendian River, who is a champion of universal design and matters to do with disabilities. He happened to be an external examiner for the School of Art and Design. And uh, based on my experiences, we started talking with him. So he started mentoring me and uh, talking to, to me about issues to do with disability. So that's how I started getting uh, interest in matters to do with disability mainstreaming. So by the time I was completing my postgraduate studies in master's level, I had developed interest and started doing research on disability. Disability mainstreaming at the university started with awareness creation and identifying challenges students with disabilities face with the intention of mitigating these challenges while engaging the management 
which was very receptive. I started uh, creating awareness within the university on matters to do with disabilities, the challenges we were experiencing and advising the universities how those challenges could actually be mitigated. So the university came up with what we call disability mainstreaming committees. So it started all the way at the department level, then going to the college level, then the university level. So at university level, we had what we call the Central Administration Committee on Disability Mainstreaming. So they started going around. Those committees started talking to people with disabilities, students, members of staff, their challenges and how those challenges could be solved and mitigated. Disability mainstreaming at the university has come with a lot of benefits for students enrolling with disabilities, as explained by Dr. Munene. By the time students are joining the university, they indicate whether they have a disability. And there is a, an officer who is assigned to follow up on those students on the form of disabilities they have, and which assistance we can actually be able to accord them. Is it assistive devices? for those who have mobility challenges. So are we assisting them with walking sticks? Are we assisting them with uh, wheelchairs? People with hearing impairments? Are we assisting them with hearing aids? Those who have uh, visual impairments? Are we offering them uh, devices? So there is a program in place and we have a disability officer in place who is able to handle all these challenges. With so many challenges affecting persons with disabilities, Dr. Munene articulated several issues that if looked into would ultimately make a big difference and bring positive change. One of the challenges we have is a lack of awareness, so stigma associated with disability. Then we find uh, the national government, for example, doesn't allocate enough resources to people with disabilities. I can tell you for sure, as we speak, the development fund allocated to people with disabilities is only 200 Kenya shilling million. 200 million, we are talking about the same amount uh, being funded to two constituencies under constituency development fund. A constituency gets 100 million. Now you are talking about a national organization because National Council deal with the whole of Kenya, uh, dealing with matters of disability, being allocated only 200 million. So you can imagine that amount is not enough actually to cater for people with disabilities. And then you go to like uh, AGPO, where we talk about access to government procurement opportunities. Government talks about 5% allocation for people with disabilities. But actually, if you look at the actual numbers, you find that people with disabilities are, le are given less than 2%. So they are not able to compete, uh, to engage competitively with youths, with women. So that's a big challenge. Dr. Munene regards himself as a child of the village. He is the person he is today because his village and his grandparents stepped in to raise and fully support his education. I'm an orphan, so I'm a child of the village. So actually when coming to university, the villagers had to come together, uh, contribute for me to come to the university. So I had challenges with payment of university fees. I have a very great relationship with my grandparents and uh, I have always wanted to do something, you know, big for them. And uh, I believe I've done my best and I believe uh, uh, or rather I still feel I still need to do more for them. I can say they are comfortable but I, I'll, I'm planning to do even much more for them. Let's catch a breather, but we'll be right back with more. Don't go too far. Be bold.
differently